So welcome to the third in our series of desktop publishing with Cork Express. Uh, we're running right the way through 2017. And this week we're going to be talking about preparing pictures for print. Now, everyone these days has got a digital camera. I've, I remember the days when we used to have to uh, shoot on film and then scan on a CMYK drum scanner, which costs quite a lot of money. So uh, to, to, just to use it costs a lot of money. What it, they cost to buy, I have no idea. Uh, and uh, if your picture wasn't perfect, then you were in trouble uh, because there wasn't much that could be done about it. Uh, later, we moved to, to photo CD and we, we used to get our pictures developed. We'd hand the negatives in and they'd come back from Kodak uh, a week later with everything ready uh, at resolution, which was really not quite enough. And finally, uh, we all started getting digital cameras. The early digital cameras were, were quite uh, low resolution. I remember that the Nikon D1 really wasn't as good as using film and scanning it, but it was quicker. But now with something like a, a D810, uh, you've got 36 megapixels, which is massively more than enough for any kind of publishing you could possibly want to do. So, so you, you shoot that big to crop down. And even on smartphones now, we're seeing 20 megapixels. Now, uh, it's not just the megapixels. Uh, you need to have good noise control. You need to have good color contrast. But in post-processing, there's an awful lot we can do. And yet, the pictures that we see appearing in documents uh, printed are still often pretty rubbish. And that is for a number of reasons I'm gonna to talk to you about today. So we're not gonna spend so much time on Quark, the software, we're gonna be working in Quark Express, but we're gonna be talking about how you prepare pictures for print while using Quark. Now, basically, if you want a picture to work well, you need to uh, load it in at approximately 300, dots per inch uh, or better. Um, and uh, so I've got a, a, a graphic here uh, and you can see on my screen that up, up is coming the, uh, the color depth, RGB, the dimensions, the resolution. And this is a pretty big picture. This is from a D800. It's a TIFF file, so it's uncompressed. This is a, a, a 56, 58 megabyte file. Uh, and it's 300 dpi at that size. So open, and that comes in like that. And if we now go to the bottom of the screen, uh, and we go to the picture box, then you'll see that we get some information about this, particularly uh, that it's 300 dpi at that size. Now, uh, if I want to bleed it, and if you're going to use uh, a picture in a document bleeding to the edges, you've got to have uh, usually three or six millimeters of bleed on each size, so each side. I can I can actually create that by going to guides and just doing uh, here in the little menu there, uh, create bleed and safety guides, and I'll, I'll just say uh, three millimeters uh, of bleed and three millimeters of safety. I can type my own units in, and up those come, and that shows me where to put the edges of the picture. And just drag that over there, um, so it's there. Uh, let's get rid of those guides now, we don't want them anymore. F7 will turn the guides on and off. And you can see I've got um, way more resolution than I need. So you might say, well, well actually that's, that's great. Uh, all I do is press uh, uh, whatever hotkeys I've got defined and or, or fit, uh, use the contextual menu to, to scale picture to box and uh, just Pull that out a little bit. You see, I'm doing that at the bottom with this. Uh, uh, yeah, and now it's done. Isn't that great? That's going to look brilliant. Actually, it won't look brilliant. It will look slightly fuzzy. Uh, if we look down here, the resolution is now 370.37 DPI. And although you'd think that having more than 300 dots per inch is going to be better, actually, it might make it worse. But particularly, this won't be output sharpened in the way that you need done. So what is output sharpening? Output sharpening, uh, let's go over here, is where you put, and this is quite technical, but there's good ways of working around it, where you put 
an unsharp mask on an image, <clears throat> which is the viewing distance in inches times the resolution in pixels per inch times 0 0.0004, or resolution divided by 200 uh, for normal viewing distances. And you can do this in Photoshop with unsharp masking. If you remember the formula, I never can. Or you can do it uh, using the NIC filters, which are available from Google for free. Those used to be quite expensive filters. But I'm just going to show you how to do it in Capture One. Now, Capture One is, is the, the, the cream of the crop when it comes to uh, working with raw images. And Capture One now allows me to actually do output sharpening. You can see over here on the screen, this is, this is Capture One. These are some images I, I took earlier. Uh, uh, and, and you can see uh, I can turn output sharpening for screen or for print on. And if I now uh, output an image, uh, it will come across with what's called output sharpening. Now you can't see it on the screen here. So I'm going to go back to Quark Express and look at some I've done before. So here is an image which has got output sharpening attached and the same image with no output sharpening. On your screen, the one without output sharpening will always look better. So I'm going to zoom it right in here. You can see it down to the pixels. Uh, and you'd say, well, that, that looks much, much better. Um, whereas this one with, with output sharpening, look at the, these huge halos on there. That's what unsharp masking does. It puts halos on things. But in fact, uh, if you have that output sharpening of resolution uh, divided by 200, then you will get images that come out of the final print process, which are absolutely perfect provided they're at the correct resolution. So you, when you've got your image size, when you've done your layout, go back to the image and create a new instance, which is actually uh, at 300 DPI, uh, not at 274, not at 428, actually 300, then output sharpen it for that resolution, that output, because that output sharpening is, is to do with the final output resolution, not to do with the resolution of the image. So, the result, you can't see it on your screen. Oh, this is always scary. But this is the most important thing in preparing pictures for print I ever learned. The output on your screen will look better if it's done without output sharpening. Uh, it will look better in print if it's done with output sharpening. Now, this is the end of the road. Uh, once you've output sharpened it, you can't work on it any further. You can't do any more manipulations. Uh, so uh, don't just sharpen the only version. Now, before we go away from this, because well, I think we're almost at the end of our 10 minutes, um, I just want to look at using the correct profile. So this is straight out of the camera uh, without any uh, work done on it. You usually want to, um, at the very least, boost up the brightness because in print things tend to look duller than they do uh, on the screen because the screen's shining light through print light reflecting off. But this is straight out of the camera and this is with the wrong profile attached. Now what's profile? Every image that comes through from a camera has a profile attached. Usually it's Adobe RGB or Profoto or sRGB and that maps the color space for the image uh, in terms of the best way of using the eight bits uh, of color per, uh, per red, green, or blue, or per cyan, magenta, or yellow, or black, uh, the best way of doing it for the final process. But if you have the wrong profile, and sometimes these things get attached, uh, Photoshop went through a period where it, it kept on getting the profile wrong, then as you can see here, this orange, which is, is a bit dull, has now come across as this lurid orange. Uh, and uh, although you might say, well, I, I want to improve that a little bit, you, you definitely don't want to have this, this really strange orange here, which completely misrepresents the picture. Now, if that was somebody's flesh, they would come out looking like a lobster, uh, and that would be very bad indeed. So what to do? Basically, I would first go to, uh, on the screen, to view proof output, and I would go to my final output so I can see what things are going to look like. 
And what Quark is then doing is it's simulating uh, the way the colors are going to look. And now I'm going to look at, at this and say, does that look right? If it doesn't look right, um, first I'm going to do is I'm going to go to utilities. Uh, so over here uh, at the top of the screen, utilities, usage. And I'm going to look at the pictures and just look at what, um, okay, uh, I'm going to go to profiles actually. And, and look at what images are for different profiles. Uh, and what we'll see there is that Profoto has got attached to that image. So, okay, what can we do about that? Very simply, click on there, uh, double click it, and up comes Profoto RGB. I'm gonna change that back to the correct Adobe RGB, which is the one I'm using for this image. And what's now gonna happen is you can see here on the screen that that image is corrected to the correct look. Now, in these sharpened images I've got, I'd also done some work to boost up the brightness and to improve the curves. And that's something you should usually do. If you're doing black and white images, so monochrome, and I can preview that uh, using, again, proof output here um, uh, and uh, in the view menu, uh, and I can go to grayscale, uh, then it shows me what it's going to look like in grayscale. And that's, if you're doing mono work, and lots of work is still mono, you should always proof that. So that's it for uh, today, for preparing images for print. We've learned, I hope, three things. One is that uh, you need to output sharpen, uh, and to output sharpen, unsharp masking, the radius is the resolution divided by 200, or better still, use uh, the NIC filters, which are free from Google and Photoshop or something like Capture One, which can do it automatically, then you're sure it's going to work. Secondly, you need to get the profile correct. Usually it comes through correctly, but if you're having problems, chances are that what's gone wrong is the profiling. Then you go to usage, to uh, profiles and check is it the right profile. If you've got one picture that looks overdone, overcooked on the screen, uh, then that's the problem one, get the right profile. And finally, use in the view menu the output proofing so that you can check exactly what it's going to look like in black and white, what it's going to look like in RGB if you're doing HTML5 output, what it's going to look like in CMYK if you're doing regular print. So my name is Martin Turner, and this is the third in our series of desktop publishing with Quark Express. Uh, we'll be with you right through the year. I hope you've enjoyed that, and I look forward to seeing you next time.